Red pandas could be the perfect symbol of vegetarianism. So perfect that it's even amazing how no one has thought of it yet. After all, this cute bamboo eater is a natural predator, according to taxonomy. His relatives are canades, martens, walruses, and other fanged toothed. Once this malacca managed to switch from meat to leaves, and you will succeed. At least, that's what it seems until you figure out the situation. According to scientists, protein food makes up less than 5% of the total food consumed by red pandas. 95% are bamboo leaves and shoots. The animal did not switch to a green diet for ethical reasons. He was simply too lazy to hunt. There is a lot of bamboo, it grows quickly, it does not resist during meals. Zero energy costs. In addition, there are whole plantations of bamboo in the Himalayan mountains, just because no one eats it. On the one hand, this is a huge plus. The fewer hungry mouths you have for your food source, the more you will get. On the other hand, bamboo is ignored even by herbivores, and for good reason, its energy value is so low that it is impossible to get enough of it. There are 91 grams of water per 100 grams of young bamboo. Nutrients, such as fats, proteins, and carbohydrates in total no more than 8 grams. It's the same as if you've been eating cucumbers all your life. As a result, the baby panda eats up to 4 kilograms of fresh bamboo shoots daily. Domestic cats, for example, need only 200 to 300 grams of meat to get enough for the whole day. At the same time, both cats and pandas weigh the same about 4 to 7 kilograms of live wool weight. 4 kilos versus 300 grams do you feel vegetarianism doesn't seem like a good idea anymore. All right. By choosing the path of acute herbivore, the pandas paid for their time. The digestive tract of carnivores is not adapted to the effective digestion of leaves and grass. To get at least some useful substances, the animals have to chew a lot and spend a lot of time on it up to 13 hours a day. At the same time, of all the things that pandas eat, they digest protein the best. But even so, the cuties cannot provide their body with enough energy during the cold weather. As soon as the ambient temperature drops, the pandas wrap themselves in a fluffy tail and go into a half doze. So that no one bothers the beast during sleep, they arrange a nest in the trees. Pandas climb even better than cats. If it gets really frosty, the woolen ones go into hibernation altogether. At the same time, the body is put on a specific pause, even pregnancy stops. Depending on weather conditions, panda moms carry babies from 90 to 145 days. Pandyats should be born only in the best conditions in spring or early summer. Otherwise, neither mother nor child will survive the season. For the first three months, babies are completely dependent on their mother. After that, they begin to learn how to live independently. But at the same time, they are in no hurry to move out of the parental territory. Sometimes pandyats stay with the female for a whole year until she has new offspring. By the way, during the mating season, the red panda still shows its teeth like a real predator. Males are fiercely fighting for a female ready to reproduce. She is ready for this very thing only one day a couple of times a year. Yes, I know that their battle looks like a battle of stuffed animals. Plush pug and paws, it seems, cannot be dangerous. But the mouth on the cute little face is still fanged. And soft paws hide semi-movable sharp claws. Outside of the battle, they help the animals climb trees.